The bowl championship series has certainly changed the landscape of college football when it comes to New Year's Day. You know, 10, 15 years ago, this was the day. All the big games accounted on New Year's. Now, of course, we've got the bigger games coming up later in the week, the championship game a week and a half from now, but it doesn't matter. There are six games today. There are a couple that are outstanding, and I'm going to break them all down for you. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here wishing you all a happy New Year. Best wishes to you all. May it be a prosperous and hopefully a prosperous profitable one for you as well. Hope you had a good time last night. Let's start with your Thursday, or excuse me, your Saturday night games first. And you know what? Before I do so, let me just remind you. Use this money-saving discount coupon code if you haven't already. It is good either today or tomorrow. It will save you $25 off of any purchase you happen to make from any handicapper at the site. And the discount code is simply BOWL25. The word BOWL, the number 25, put together, no space between them. Enter that one prompted in your shopping cart, and you will have $25 taking off your final purchase price. It's a one-time usage coupon. You don't have to buy my plays, anybody's plays. Use it either today or tomorrow. BOWL25 is that discount coupon code, and of course the coupon code's only made available here on my daily videos. Try to do it once or twice a week. My way of saying thank you to you. Uh, for all of your support. Let's start now with the Fiesta Bowl clash. Oklahoma 16, 16 and a half point favorite. Biggest line in the College Bowl postseason. Of course, the second biggest line happened to be another one of their Big 12 brethren, Nebraska. And you know what happened to them a couple of nights ago against Washington, losing that game outright. Well, the same fate befall the Sooners today. Well, you know, they had to rally from a 17 nothing deficit against the Cornhuskers in the Big 12 championship game to earn this prestigious bowl berth. They are currently a 16 point favorite as I said, maybe 16 and a half, depending on where you look against Connecticut. Total in this game, 55 points. Now, Oklahoma certainly a high-scoring team, as you all know. Landry Jones triggering, triggering the nation's number four passing attack, averaging... Uh, you know, about 65% completions on the season, 35 touchdown passes, only 11 interceptions, has one of the best pass catchers in the country. In fact, number one in terms of overall receptions, that being Ryan Broyles with 118 catches this year. And let's not forget about DeMarco Murray. Ran for over 1,100 yards and also caught 69 balls out of the backfield. This is a team that averages almost 500 total yards a game. Now, the problem with Oklahoma is its defense is spotty. Connecticut, of course, a one-dimensional team offensively. They rely on the running talents of Jordan Todman, who's run for nearly 1,600 yards this season. And he will be going up against an Oklahoma run-stop unit that was only ranked 62nd in the country this year, giving up 152 rushing yards a game. That averages to 4.3 yards per carry. Now, Oklahoma's being asked to lay a big number here. Here's the negative. You know, six wins this year by Oklahoma were by sing single digits, and two more, well, those games they happened to lose. So eight of their games this year didn't even come close, right? And Bob Stoops, one and six against the spread as a bowl favorite in his career. Five consecutive losses straight up and against the spread against BCS squads in the postseason. Now, Connecticut has covered 18 of its last 25 as a dog, including 11 of its last 13. It ended the season on a five-game winning streak straight up and against the spread. And Connecticut head coach Randy Etzel, 3-1 and one straight up and against the spread in bowl play, including an upstate of South Carolina last year. But let me ask you this, are you willing to take Connecticut, a team that many feel don't deserve to be here in a BCS Bowl, but because they won the Big East, they are? I think you have to lay the points with Oklahoma in this one. Not a game I personally play, but I'd lay it with the Sooners. How about the Rose Bowl? I think this is the most entertaining game on today's docket. You've got undefeated TCU laying a solid three points against Wisconsin. The total in this one, 58 points. TCU, as I said, undefeated, winning its games by an average margin of 43 to 11 this season. Number one total defense in the country, giving up just 215 yards a game. Number nine total offense, averaging 492 yards a game. Quarterback Andy Dalton, 43. Make that 49 touchdown passes over the past couple of years. Um, Ed Wesley, an underrated running back, over a thousand yards rushing, averaging 6.6 .6 yards per carry. Of course, this Wisconsin team, 11 and 1 this year, finished the season with six straight wins and cover. In fact, the final three games for the Badgers, their offense put a total of 201 points on the board. You know, everybody thinks that Wisconsin is this big physical team, strong offensive line, a team that can pound the ball into. Uh, the middle of other teams' bellies and just run with abandon. 
and they can. But the thing that made Wisconsin so good this year is the Badgers developed offensive diversity. A team that ran for 247 yards a game, a team that passed for 203 yards a game, and that same offensive line, so proficient at pass blocking, provided excellent protection for their quarterback as well. Just 12 sacks allowed on the season. First Rose Bowl appearance for Wisconsin since 1999. You know they were 2-0 this season as a dog, winning both games outright against Ohio State and then the following week at Iowa. Gary Patterson, 5-2 ATS in bowl action. In this game, I think the way you've got to play it is the under sitting right now, as I said, at around 58 points. Listen, do you see this game, both of these teams getting in the 30s? I don't. I think this is going to be one of those games in the 20s, both teams in the mid to high 20s. This one stays under the total with ease. Next game, we're going to start going into the earlier afternoon games, the Gator Bowl clash between Mississippi State and Michigan. You know, Mississippi State was a 5-5.5 five five point favorite. Now you're going to find the Miss State down to about three and a half, maybe three in this one. Of course, for Miss State, Dan Mullen just got a new contract extension for four years, estimated to be about $10 million. Meanwhile, Michigan's Rich Rod, well, Rich Rod could be out of a job after this game. That's what happens when you just can't beat anybody of note. Michigan starting the season 5-0 and straight up, finishing the season losing five of their last seven games on the field failing to cover all seven of them because of a defense that was just leaky. Michigan averaging 34 points a game offensively behind quarterback Denard Robinson, even though he was in and out of the lineup all season long. But the defense, well, they're giving up 34 points a game. And especially vulnerable against the run, giving up 188 rushing yards a game. You know, that's problems because Mississippi State, this team is good, underrated and good. Their offense averaging 27 points a game. Their offensive... Uh, Thrust is really the ground game that's averaging 216 yards a game, 4.6 yards per carry. And Mississippi State's defense, unlike Michigan, they play it. They give up just 20 points a game. Listen, they held Auburn's Cam Newton to 136 yards passing and a season-low 70 yards rushing in the third week of the season and a 17-14 loss to those Tigers who are playing for the national title later in the week. Now... Fan base wise, it's going to be a bowl supported by the Mississippi State fans. They quickly sold all 15,000 of their uh, pointed uh, ticket allotment and wanted more. Meanwhile, Michigan gave back 5,000 of those that they had uh, given to them. Uh, Michigan has covered just uh, 10 of its last 36 games during Rich Rodriguez's tenure, but they are 7 and 1 against the spread. Their last eight events is uh, non Big Ten squads. Here, the number is 60. Even though Michigan can put points on the board, this Michigan Mississippi Mississippi State team is good defensively. I think they hold the Wolverines in check. I think both teams struggle to put too many points on the board. This one stays in the 20s for both, and it stays under the post total of 60. The Capital One Bowl. Why is Alabama a 10-point favorite against Michigan State? Damned if I know. Nick Saban's team, well, you know, I mean, they struggled down the stretch. They coughed off the big lead to Auburn. Alabama, or excuse me, Michigan State only lost one game this year. That was to Wisconsin. That's why they shared part of the Big Ten crown. Um, this Michigan State team, offensively, Kirk Cousins completing 68% of his passes, uh, over 2,700 yards passing. Two good running backs in Baker and Bell. Yes, Alabama has McElroy quarterback and Mark Ingram at running back and Julio Jones at wide receiver. But again, this game seems like it's going to be much tighter than a 10-point number. So I'm going to grab Michigan State. Remember this, Nick Saban's team, Nick Saban, 4-6 and six straight up and against the spread in ball action. Finally, let's move up to your early afternoon card. First one, we want to talk about the Outback Bowl, the last game for Urban Meyer at the Florida Gators' helm. Meanwhile, Joe Paterno is still going strong for the Nittany Lions. Florida is 7-point favorite in this one. Uh, listen, you know, Urban Meyer is 6-1 and one straight up and against the spread in bowl play with Utah and Florida. Joe Paterno, well, how about this? 24-11-1 straight up, 23-12-1 against the spread during his lengthy coaching career in the college bowl postseason. Florida lost five of its final eight games down the stretch, beating just Vanderbilt, Appalachian State, and then Georgia in overtime. Struggled to get anything going at quarterback with John Brantley, Jeff Demps, their top running back in and out of the lineup all season. I think in this one, you grab the points with Paterno and Penn State. The final game, the Ticket City Bowl. Do you care? 
care about this one? Because I don't. Texas Tech laying 9.5 against Northwestern, a total of 16.5. Northwestern playing without their starting quarterback. You know he got injured. Persa, they failed to cover 8 of their last 9 games. They've lost 7 straight bowl games straight up since 1995. They allowed 118 points in their final 2 games of the season, both losses. I'll lay it with Texas Tech in this one. Remember, that bowl discount coupon code is BOWL25 to save you 25 bucks. Good luck, everybody, and I'll catch you again Sunday early in the morning.